We are live. Yes, we are. All right, we're live. Hey, guys. Welcome. My name is Luke. Today's live class, I hope, will be very interesting. This is an English class, so if you're not an English learner, get out. If you are an English learner, well, welcome. Welcome to the welcome to the uh, welcome to the party. So today we're going to be talking about a couple things. I have some videos to show you, some interesting videos. One of them is about a conspiracy theory. We'll talk a little bit about about that. Hopefully, it won't become uh, uh, too controversial. I think it's interesting, and uh, and then we're going to be answering some questions. So if you have questions, I can answer those, whether they're about American culture, about me, about English, grammar, pronunciation, whatever it may be, I'm happy to answer any questions. So that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. Welcome. If you're watching this on the playback and you didn't make it live, shame on you. Shame on you. No, not really. You can join next time. We, we do these pretty often. So just make sure you're subscribed so that you can see when they happen. And also, don't forget to hit the like button. That's very important. If you hit the like button, then it, it will tell YouTube, hey, live class happening now. Please watch, everyone. And also, what else is there? Oh, two other things. I know I, I am saying many things here, but two other things. Number one, I should say number three, right? <laughs> I'm starting over. Number one, which is also number three. Uh, there are some links in the description. One of the links is courses, uh, Udemy or Skillshare, and you can you can take courses uh, there. I think they're on sale right now, very cheap. And also there is another link which is the WhatsApp group. So if you're interested in chatting in English, then you can chat there. Join the WhatsApp group. Anybody can join. I see we have a few people here. Hip hip hooray to that. That's good. Sleepwalkers here. Paulson. Xiaoli is here, and Lolly Lolly is here, Luba's here. Very good, everybody's here. Sleepwalker's here. I'm going to open up a Coke Zero. I know it's not very healthy, but I need something. Hope you don't mind. Hope you don't mind, guys. MJ is here, too. MJ is from Warsaw. Oh, cool. The Warsaw Pact. That's all I know about Warsaw. Well, I thought... I thought one thing we could do since it's what we did last time, I thought one thing that we could do is take a look at the numbers as we did before. Um, so if you guys remember previously, we had looked at the latest numbers for the stuff that's going on. And I thought, you know what? We did it last time. Why don't we do it this time? See how much it's grown. I think it's important to just keep it in mind so that you know what's going on in the world. So why don't we just take a quick look over at the numbers. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over here. Hey yo. And we're gonna open up yep, we're gonna open up Chrome. Why is it zoomed in so far? That's weird. Alright, well I mean as long as you can see it, right? Ah, okay. All right, so here we go. Uh, so far today, today is April 10th. April 10th. We have 1,677,298 cases. Deaths, we now have crossed 100,000. Now we are at 101,000. 579. I'm looking at the website called worldometers.info, and uh, that's what I'm looking at. Recovered, this is an encouraging number, right? Three times as high. 372,000, well, almost four times as high. So that's very encouraging. And now we can take a look at the by country numbers here. So we can look at it by country. Um, da, da, da. There we go. All right. So let's take a look here. I'm going to scroll over. Oh, you can't see that. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. Hey, why can't... What the heck? 
What the heck? Okay, here we go. All right, there we go. All right, so we've got in the USA now, we've got 489,000 cases, 20,000 new cases today, and totally in the United States, 18,000 deaths, which is about the same as Italy, about at 18,000. Italy has a little bit more. So the numbers are going up very quickly. And if we pop into the USA here, United States, here we go. Scroll down. Here's where I am, New York, right here. And New York has 170,000 cases, which apparently is extremely high. And this is how many new cases we have today, which is a crazy number. That can't be right. That's insane. That can't be right. That's just crazy. Total deaths, 7,844, and 777 people died today, which is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And still there are people who say, oh, the economy is more important. The f it's just the same as the regular flu. It's just the same as, well, what about all the people who die in car crashes? Well, those things are also terrible. But when you crunch it down to a very short period of time, and it's a new cause, and, it's, and it has a growth rate, which is extremely high, that's why you need to be worried. People who say, and <laughs> my, my, my old father is one of these people, people who say, um, well, yeah, but there are a lot of people who you know, die in car accidents or you know, have coconuts land on their heads, whatever it is. It's true. But the worrying part is, the, the reason that it's so serious is not that. The reason that it's so serious is that the rate of car, accident, car accidents isn't like this. It's not climbing at this rate, right? It's fairly level. In fact, it's going slowly down as we work on making the fatality rate for car crashes lower and lower. So we're doing something about it, and it's at a fairly level point, and we understand it and we can work on it, right? But when something is going like this and you don't have a solution for it, and the rate uh, is maybe the same number as car crashes right now, but it's growing like this, then you have to say, wow, this is an insane situation. So I don't really understand the logic of that argument, but people in America are saying it, and they're saying things like, you know, the economy, the economy is so important, we can't crash the economy at what point do you say the economy is more important than people? I would say at no point do you say that. If you make that choice, that's the wrong choice. But hey, that's just me. All right, so we've done that. Update, that's the update. I know it's depressing, but uh, it's good to know what's going on. So I always keep an eye on that. And... Um, uh, I would encourage everybody to stay safe out there, wear a mask, wash your hands, all of that stuff. Stay home, play video games, play World of Warcraft Classic, or whatever you want to play. Uh, so today I'm going to be answering questions, and, and I have some videos to share, and whatever. So if you guys have questions, feel free to ask, and whether it's pronunciation or culture or personal questions, anything is, anything is okay. So, if there are no questions right at the start, then I'm going to start with my first video. Everybody's here. Rolfie is here. Lolly Lolly is here. Cool. Uh, how do you say your name? Is it Dash Dashia? Dashia? Is that... How do you say that? I'm not sure how do you say that. All right. Anderson's here. I, I assume, Anderson, I assume you're at work right now. Isaac, hello, welcome. Let me just take a quick sip of my Coke Zero as I get ready to share a video. It's good to see everybody. All right. Uh, how do my relatives go through this? They did fine, yeah. They live in a pretty small town in the north of China, 
So there were a couple cases, but I'm pretty sure now there are no cases. And they can go out uh, to get stuff if they need. And so, yeah, they're, they're doing fine. They're doing much better. Um, they were staying inside for a long time because everyone was staying inside. But, uh, and there were cases, but it wasn't that serious in their town. They live in a small town in Liaoning province called Huludao. It's a small town, which I've been to many times. I like it. I think it's an interesting town. Okay. All right, any questions? Any other questions before we get started? No. In that case, let's get started. All right, so I have a couple videos for you guys, and I think they're kind of interesting. Funny, sad, whatever you want to say. And, uh, you know, don't, if I share something, guys, that offends you, you know, don't hate me for it. I'm just sharing something because it's kind of entertaining or ridiculous or funny. Uh, so I might share something that's a little offensive today, but you know what? I'm sure we'll all get over it. And I don't mean it with any, you know, hatred or anything like that. I just mean it because I think personally it's funny. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. That's okay. So... Uh, there is a trend in the United States. Uh, a, we could call it a cultural trend. We could call it a religious trend. Now, religion is a very important part of American culture. We have many religions. The most common religion, the main religion, the most popular religion is Christianity. And that has been around the longest, but we have lots of religious people in the United States. I would say most people in the United States are religious. There's one group in particular, and they are very focused on the uh, preaching part of religion. They're called televangelists. Okay, that means they go on TV and they, they preach about Jesus or whatever sort of thing they want to preach about, okay, usually related to Christianity. But sometimes they come up with some, some theories that I think are <laughs> a little goofy. So I'm going to show you a video of a preacher who has a theory that the virus is caused by a certain behavior. Now, you're going to hear the word <laughs> fornication. Fornication is uh, basically is sex outside of marriage. That's what it is. That's how it's defined in the Bible. The Bible is the, the book uh, that Christianity is based on. And according to the Bible, it's, it's a sin. Okay. So he has this theory that coronavirus is punishment, it seems to be, for fornication. He's going to share some stats. And I, <laughs> I'm sorry if this offends you, but I think it's funny. I think it's funny because it's ridiculous. So pay attention and um, <laughs> let's just check it out. Let's 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 take a look at the fornication video. <laughs> I was thinking as I was putting all this together in my mind about the sin of fornication. And I thought about the term fornication. I did a little research. There are 7.5 million unmarried couples living together in the United States. This is not worldwide, just in America. 7.5 million couples. That means 15 million people that are living together unmarried. And that's increased over the last 10 years by 138%. Now, in addition to that, I, I hope this research is not correct, but I got it straight from the encyclopedia. It says that 5% of new brides in America now are virgins. That means 95% have already committed fornication. Now God says, all do not be deceived, God is not mocked. No fornicator, no adulterer, nor effeminate, nor abuser of themselves with mankind, nor extortioner, nor drunkard, None of these shall inherit the kingdom of God. If we think we can just ignore God and live a sinful lifestyle, 
well, we cannot do it. And, you know, I believe what you're saying, that God may be using this as a wake-up call. This coronavirus may be a privilege because I'll tell you right now, there's a much bigger judgment coming. It's in the Bible. All right, so I always mute myself and then I forget to unmute because I don't want you guys to hear me. I'm sneezing the whole time the videos are playing. So the idea here is that um, there's this idea, this theory that he has. He seems to be suggesting that the sin of fornication, which is uh, sex that happens outside of marriage, is part of a judgment from God for sort of corruption or sin of, of all kinds. And he uses a Bible, he quotes a Bible verse there. So I want to go through a couple of the, the words there, but I want to just remind you that if you, if you are concerned about this, he does have the pandemic bundle available. It's $35. You can grab it. If you need peace of mind during this difficult time, grab the pandemic bundle. Only thirty-five dollars. It's a great price. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about a few things that he says specifically. He says first, he got it straight from the encyclopedia. So this is his the source of his stats. Okay, he's getting his statistics from the encyclopedia. What are his statistics? Well, his statistics are that only five percent of people who get married are. Uh, are virgins when they get married. A virgin is someone who hasn't had sex yet, right? And if you have had sex, then you are not a virgin anymore. And he's saying that this is a bad thing. Now, personally, I would argue that that's kind of a, a good thing because if you have a lot of experience, you know what you like, you know what you don't like, you've been in relationships, then it's more likely that you're going to have a successful marriage when you do get married. Just my opinion. More experience is better in relationships, sexually, all that stuff. The more experience you have, the better you're going to be when you get married. So in fact, I would recommend fornication <laughs> before getting married, but that's just me. That's just me. Now, he says something is a bit of a stretch, or he, he, he suggests that, he su he's suggesting that if people are uh, reading the Bible carefully, if, he's, if, you, if, you, if you look carefully, at the Bible and you read it, you will get or come to the conclusion that the pandemic is possibly caused by or maybe a consequence of people's actions, this sinful action. I would say that's a bit of a stretch. If someone says something is a bit of a stretch, that means that you're making an assumption that's a pretty far jump from one thing to another. It's a bit of a stretch. You could say that's quite a stretch. There's this one verse that says this about this group of people. Now, this terrible thing that's going on in the world is caused by, is caused by that action? Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Doesn't seem quite right to me. And also, you know, why is it that uh, it's growing in places that are both religious and non-religious? I'm not sure about that. It's not growing in China. China is not very, very religious. Okay. The other thing he says is wake-up call. A wake-up call, someone says something is a wake-up call. A wake-up call is when you realize something that you didn't realize before, and it's usually some event that triggers you and makes you realize it. Oh, when, you know, when my friend told me that, uh, that he was uh, going to be changing careers, I, I realized I've been stuck in the same career for the last 10 years. It was really a wake-up call for me. So my friend did something, and it suddenly made me realize something. So, hey, this virus is happening, it's going on, it might be the cause of sinful actions. This might be a wake-up call to people to realize, hey, you know, we need to stop fornication, <laughs> we need to wait until we get married, and uh, then everything will be okay, there will be no more viruses, no more problems in the world. So anyway, I just wanted to share this video. I think it's quite interesting. Uh, if you have any questions about this, just let me know in the comments and make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to check out my courses in the links in the description as well. All right. Guys, what do you think of this uh what do you think of this video? Very 
interesting, I think. I have another one similar to this that I'm going to share, I think, in a separate video. But I don't know why I think this stuff is hilarious. Uh, and if you guys, if any of you guys do pick up the Pandemic Bundle, uh, please let me know how it is. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if it's cool, if it's useful. Excuse me, for, sorry for burping. Let me know. I'm drinking Coke Zero, so can't I can't help it. Yeah, he said it's in the Bible. Exactly. A wake-up call is, yeah, sort of like a warning or a sudden realization caused by something. It's always really ooh, a wake-up call for me. Uh, sometimes we say health events are wake-up calls. For example, someone has a health scare. They go to the hospital because of shortness of breath. And maybe it's caused by a heart issue. Maybe it's not a serious one, but anyway, they have to go to the hospital. So then they come back and they go, well, I really need to be more healthy. I need to exercise more. I need to eat better. Wake up call for me. That was a wake up call. So something that makes you realize something, something that makes you take action. OK. And again, I'm not trying to offend anybody's religion. I'm not saying people, you know, shouldn't be religious. It's fine. I'm c cool with every everything. Great. But I think it's funny. Um, Fatima says, please, I want to make sure to use a playlist about the difference between words in English, such as new versus modern, between versus among, such as as versus like. You want me to make a playlist? A playlist? Uh, oh, you mean YouTube videos. Uh, voice versus sound. Well, there could be a long list of that, Fatima. I don't know. That's a tough one because there could be such a huge list. That might be an interesting single topic video instead of a playlist to do one video about that. Uh, differences between things that are similar because, for example, voice versus sound, there are some similarities, there's some overlap there, but, uh, you know, uh, it depends. It depends. I can I can talk about those if you like. Each of those that you mentioned, if you want me to do that, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Anderson says, explain shoot the breeze, the idiom. That's a good one. I like that one. Very good. Very good question, Anderson. All right. Anderson. Anderson says, explain, shoot the breeze. And he notes that it is an idiom to shoot the breeze. Now, this is, I think, a good example because it, it lets us know, it indicates to us the nature of idioms. An idiom is something that comes from culture and that you can't look at immediately and automatically know it. Right, some phrases you might look at are obvious. You read the words in the phrase and you say, I see, I understand. I can read those words and I get the meaning. All set. Done. I've learned it. Great. However, idioms often have a meaning that has very little to do with the meaning that you think you see when you read the words. If you say, shoot the breeze, if we take that literally, what does that mean? We have a gun, and there's wind going by, and we're trying to shoot it, right? That, that would be the literal, maybe the literal meaning. Ah, that darn breeze. Kill it. Yeah, somebody get that breeze blowing around. Get it. Stop it. That would be, that's ridiculous, right? What does that mean? So we can say it doesn't mean that. When people say, uh, just staying at home, shooting the breeze. That sounds pretty casual. That sounds kind of relaxed. Doesn't sound like you're sitting at home with a gun shooting into the sky. <laughs> Although that <laughs> that could be fun too. Actually, that is one of the pastimes of my family members at Thanksgiving. Sometimes at Thanksgiving, we go out into the countryside and we shoot skeet. That means that we'll have this little machine that shoots these little clay discs and we have a shotgun and we say, you say, pull, pull. When you say pull, the clay disc, someone pulls a lever or a switch, and the clay disc shoots off into the sky. And you aim as it's in the air, and and you try to explode the clay disc in the air with the shotgun. And it's really fun. I like it. So that would be a way that maybe Americans shoot the breeze. But that has nothing to do with shooting. Because sitting around at home, reading a book, sitting around at home, talking with a friend or browsing on the internet, watching YouTube videos, could be shooting the breeze too, right? Sometimes it's with people, often it's with people or by yourself. 
it's kind of just like relax, do nothing in particular, hang out with someone, for example, hang out by yourself, and you don't have a clear intentional action. You're not specifically doing something, right? You're not, you're not saying, I need to finish this, I need to do this, I have to get this. It's not like that. You're kind of just relaxed. Maybe you're just hanging out with someone. You don't have a direction, right? So when we say we're hanging out with someone, we talk about what we did when we hung out with them. What did you do with your friend? Oh, we just, you know, hung around, shot the breeze, past tense, shot the breeze, meaning nothing in particular, nothing in particular. So that's how it's used, okay? It means to not do anything in particular, either by yourself or with people, more often used with people. And that's how it's used. That's what it means. Okay. So sometimes people will be critical of you using that because you don't have a specific plan. What do you want to do tomorrow? I don't know. We could just shoot the breeze. All right. Well, do you have any better ideas, right? Something actually we could do, like go watch a movie? No, not really. Why don't we just stay at home and shoot the breeze? All right. Fine. Which means whatever comes to our minds to do in the moment. It may include all kinds of different things, but the point is that it's not a serious plan and it's not very deliberate. That is how it's used. It's a good question. Anderson, thanks a lot. Guys, don't forget to hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And subscribe. All right. Good question, Anderson. I like it. I like it very much. Um, yeah, I wonder if anyone else has done shooting as a sport because we do definitely... We do that in the United States. A lot of people own guns. I personally don't own a gun because I live in New York. But when I go back to Ohio, which is where I'm from, for Thanksgiving, we often shoot guns because Ohio is a rural place, a lot of countryside areas, farms, and so on. And so a lot of people uh, in Ohio own guns. A lot of people hunt. In November, I think, is hunting season. You can hunt deer during that season. And... Um, uh, that's a pastime for people. People shoot clay discs. People shoot deer. People go hunting. Personally, I don't like hunting. I'm not a fan of... I, I, I don't think I could kill animals in that way. But shooting the, the clay disc is quite a lot of fun. Rolfi, I totally agree. Any kind of judgment approach in any so-called spiritual movement is the easiest way to chase me out. Yeah, I kind of agree with that too. My opinion is... Um, the value of religious belief or spirituality is to give meaning to life, to give a feeling of safety and purpose and community and a sense of having a connection to something that you can't see, perhaps, and also the people around you who believe the same thing, right? Because cultures are often based around spiritual belief and cultures are often based around religion right whether you're a buddhist or whether you're a, a muslim or a, a christian or a hindu or whatever you might be so that's i think the great value of a spiritual belief in a religion having that community the connection to people having the community to feel like you're a member of right but then when you go to an extreme and you start to make these crazy judgments, oh, the end of the world is coming, which is what people are saying now. Oh, uh, this terrible thing is caused by the behavior of these people. And I judge this behavior as bad. Oh, uh, you uh, don't believe what I believe and therefore you're a bad person. That kind of stuff is, I think, not helpful. There's, there's really nothing good about that. It doesn't do anything positive for anybody. It might make you feel good about yourself. Maybe gives you a feeling of confidence that you're better than everyone else. Great. Good for you. The wonderful. Um, but uh, who, who is that benefiting in any way, right? Who is that helping? I'm going to start a, I'm going to start my own religion based on learning English and uh, it'll be called Lukeism. And we'll have a I'll have to come up with some some uh, crazy theories. Uh, Hasib says when to use to be and to be plus ing. Uh, the only reason I'm not going to answer that one now is because I've answered it 
I've answered that one in another video that just posted on the other channel, uh, especially two plus four as well. And that, so I would recommend watching it there just because I kind of just talked about that very recently because that was a similar question. So if I explain it, I explain it again, then people will be hearing the same, the same thing again that they already heard. So yes, Rolfie, I would agree. That's probably fanaticism. Who needs it? If anyone wants to help me create my English learning religion, let me know. We'll be fanatics. It's going to be a fanatic religion. Extreme. All right. Lolly Lolly will be a will be the um the deity of the of the religion probably. Very mysterious. I'm going to answer uh, as you guys, if you guys have more questions, let me know. I'm going to answer part of... What was that sound? This Coke Zero is doing weird things to me. It's causing me to burp. It's causing my throat to make weird noises. What's going on? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? The problem with having this microphone very close to me is all kinds of strange noises coming out of my, my head. Uh, all right, so I'm going to try to answer part of Fatima's question, and then maybe we can continue it at another time. If, Fatima, you want to continue the list, maybe we can do that list, and then over time, gradually, we'll have built up a playlist, and, and that will satisfy your, your requirement. How about that? Does that sound good? Does that sound nice? All right, so... Let me pop that up there. Fatima says, Fatima Books. Very cool last name. I wish my last name was Books. Read Books. I wish that was my full name. Please, I want you to make a playlist about the difference between words in English such as new versus modern, between versus among, as versus like, voice versus sound. So I'd like to just try these, Fatima. And then, and then let's see if we can build up a playlist over the next few years, maybe, as you continue to give me uh, words that are similar, and we can talk about how they're used. Now, of course, as I've said many times, you have to be looking at the dictionary and a thesaurus to see how these words overlap. You have to be reading examples of the words so that you can feel what they might mean, how they're used. Sometimes... You might look in a dictionary and see a similar definition, very similar, very, very similar. But then you find when you go out there and you start using the language that actually the definition is similar, but the usage may be very different. And maybe the connotation is very different. What is connotation? Connotation of a word is what it means in the culture, in how it's used. How do people feel when you use it, right? If you say, for example, very good versus great. Well, we could say that those have basically the same meaning in one sense, right? This ice cream is very good. This ice cream is great. But people may have a different sense, a different feeling, depending on which one you use. And it depends on which person you're talking to. So that feeling that you create would be called the connotation, the connotation. The denotation would be the actual literal meaning. All right. So let's take some of these and just sort of explore them. And I'm just going to give you sort of my impression of how how they're used, how I would use them, and where they overlap, and maybe where they don't overlap. So let's take new versus modern. New versus modern. Now this one I think is, is pretty interesting because one is about the condition of a thing and one is about the style of a thing or the form of a thing relative to the context, maybe the cultural context. Something something that can be brand new, but not modern. Because maybe it has an old design, but it's out of date. Maybe the design hasn't been updated in a long time, but it was just made, just came out of the factory. You just got it, right? So that would be a great differentiator. Let's say there's a model of car, okay? And let's say that model of car was designed in 1994. This is just an example. I don't know if this is 
real. I don't know if any real car model is like this, but let's just say, okay, that there's this car model and it was designed in 1994. And that was quite a long time ago, right? So that's more than 20 years ago. So every year they make these cars always coming out of the factory, pretty popular. For whatever reason, they've decided to keep the design of the car exactly the same for all these years. They really haven't changed anything, right? And so some might say, oh, it's not a very cool car, but people still buy it. Okay. Now, last week I bought one. I have one. And I say, hey, everyone, who wants to come and see my new car? I say, oh, let's go and see it. What, what, what new, new car do you have? I, I show them the car and they go, oh, I said, do you like it? Eh, not really. Why not? It kind of looks kind of old fashioned. It's not really, not really cool. Why not? Why not? They, they designed that car back in 1994. It just doesn't look very modern. It doesn't look very modern. It doesn't seem very modern. Yeah, but it's new. It's brand new. They just made it. Okay, so that's kind of the difference. That's the basic idea. Modern is in relation to fashion trends. Modern is in relation to what people perceive as fresh, right? New in the sense of an idea that has just come out. New in the sense of the latest thing that's trending, whatever it might be, whether it's a car or a magazine or a product of some kind, an iPhone, whatever it may be. And new new is just the physical st status of this thing. It's not old, <laughs> the opposite of old. That's the difference between those two. Okay, hopefully that's clear. That's my sense of the difference. Now between and among is also very interesting. Generally the way people use between, and let's say between people, because we can definitely say between and among are different in a physical way, because you could be between two buildings, but you wouldn't be among buildings. You wouldn't say you're among buildings. That would be very strange, right? Standing among buildings. Some people might use it as a description. It's not incorrect to say, but it's a little bit weird. Usually when we use among, we're talking about people, relationships to people. There's a connection to me and these other things that are around me, which are the same kind of thing. Usually that's people. And it could be that they're physically around me or not non-physically around me. Maybe it's a maybe it's a video call. I can still use among for non-physical things as well. Whereas between is often to, to, and we can use it in a very physical, literal physical way. I'm standing between two trees. I'm standing between two trees, okay? I'm in the middle, there's a tree there, and there's a tree there. So it's very literal, okay? Often the way that we use this when we're talking about things with people is between is two people, and it's often, for example, a secret. We have a secret between us that neither of us will ever reveal. Now, if we have more than one person, or rather more than two people together, a group, then we might use among. All of us have a secret between us? That sounds a little bit weird. But this group of five people, we have a secret among us that we will never reveal. So as soon as we jump beyond two, we start to have a feeling of a group, those around us instead of that other person. Between is that other person, and the secret is this non-physical thing that exists that connects us. Among is a larger group, and we can still have things that connect us that are non-physical, like a secret, for example, uh, but it's more than, more than just one other person, me and one other person, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's new versus modern, between versus among, and then we have... Uh, as versus like. Now this one is is also unique because we have overlap because they have the same they can't have the same meaning, meaning similar, okay? But they're just used differently. They're used very differently. And as can be used in ways that like can't be used and like can be used in ways that as can't be used. For example, if I say I like this, I can't say I as this, right? <laughs> so there you go, that's one. Now Let's say we mean similar, not like as in love, but like as in they are similar, okay? And as as in they are similar, okay? We use as in the phrase something like this. I am as old as him, but he is much smarter than me. So we're the same age. I am as old as him, but he is much smarter than me, okay? Or we might say something like this. I am not as old as he is. 
I am not as old as he is, but I feel like I'm a little wiser than him. So we're using comparison there. We're saying one is older, one is younger, or they're the same age, and we use as, as, to make that comparison, okay? We say, as fast as a rabbit, as fast as a rabbit, okay? As cool as a cucumber. Is that a phrase? Maybe. As cool as a cucumber, okay? So that's how we use generally as when we're comparing things. And we often use as when we're, when we're uh, giving a sort of analogy, right? It is as a leaf in the wind. It is as a leaf in the wind. That is a very poetic way of expressing something. It is like a leaf in the wind, which is what that means. It is like a leaf in the wind. It is as, which is less common, a leaf in the wind. Okay, that doesn't mean it is a leaf in the wind. We're, we're making what's called a simile, which is a sort of literary poetic device, which allows you to compare two things using like or as. What is like a leaf in the wind? Well, I, I don't know. Life? <laughs> life? Life is like a leaf in the wind. Well, I guess so, yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. Unexpected things can happen. So, yeah, life is like a leaf in the wind. Life is as a leaf in the wind. Either of those are okay. That's called a simile. But if I say life is a leaf in the wind, that's called a metaphor. A metaphor is when we don't use like or as. Okay. Now, when we want to use like just to compare things, we might say something like, oh, this, this really tastes, tastes like Diet Pepsi. It doesn't taste like regular Coke. It tastes like Diet Pepsi. Does that mean it tastes exactly the same as Diet Pepsi? No, that means it's very similar. So when we use like in that way, this is very similar to Diet Pepsi. This tastes, verb, like Diet Pepsi, okay? That is a way to say these two things are very similar. And that's probably the most common use, way to use like to compare, okay? So we use like to talk about the similarity between things, okay? You know what? You're really a lot like my brother. You're really a lot like my brother. I'm not like you. I'm not like you. That means if I say I'm not like you, it doesn't mean I don't like you. That's a different meaning of like. I don't like you it means I have no good feelings about you. I'm not like you. Maybe I like you very much, but I'm not like you means that we're not similar. I don't think that we're similar. Okay. If I say you're a lot like my brother, you're a lot like my brother. That means you and my brother are very similar in a lot of ways. That's my opinion. Similar, not the same. So we can use like for the simile. We can also use it to describe things that are similar, like Coke Zero and, for example, Diet Pepsi. I don't even know if that's true because I don't drink Diet Pepsi. It's just an example. It's just an example. Okay. Now, one other way that we use like in this way is at the end. We would say, oh, what was your, what was the, what was your trip like? What was your trip like? Ah, what was that movie like? What was it like to visit Antarctica? What was it like? What was it like? So there we're just asking someone to share an experience. And you could share a similar experience that might help to communicate that experience to us because we don't have the experience of going to that place, right? But if we ask the question, what was that like? We may just get a clear, simple description of the experience without any comparisons to anything else. What was it like? Your trip to Antarctica, what was it like? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, we, we arrived, we had to arrive on a very small plane. There was a lot of turbulence and uh, the, the penguin, we were attacked by, by pe no, penguins. Are, that's, the penguins are not Antarctica, they're South Pole. We were attacked by, what could attack us? Ice robots. We were attacked by ice robots, whatever it may be. Okay, you'd share the experience. You could say just exactly what happened, okay? So that's how we use that. Now, the last one is voice versus sound. And this one, I think, is the easiest to explain. Voice versus sound is simply a ah, ah, versus the much broader thing of anything that makes noise that reaches our ears. OK, so when a tree falls down, if someone hears it, it makes a sound. In fact, that's the classic example. If a tree falls in a forest and nobody is around to hear it, does it make a sound? The answer to the question is no. When the tree falls down in the forest, it makes waves and disturbances in the air, pressure waves in the air. But the definition of sound is receiving the pressure waves in the air with one of these guys, right? On your head. That's what sound means. 
And so we say it doesn't make a sound because there was nothing there to receive it because you need a receiver in order to say it's sound because sound is the phenomenon of receiving pressure waves from the air with your brain through your ear holes. <laughs> That's kind of what sound is. Okay, so it's a very broad idea. Anything can make a sound. A mouse can make a sound. I can make this sound with my hand against my forehead. I can make a sound with my voice. Eh, 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 eh. I can do whatever, okay? Sound is a very general kind of thing. It is a phenomenon. Voice is usually specifically about the sounds that we make with our throats, we say with our voice boxes or our vocal cords. So the sounds that come out of this thing, that is your voice, okay? So if someone is being too loud, you could say, please, could you please lower your voice? It's a little loud. Could you please lower your voice or quiet down a bit? Please quiet down a little bit. You wouldn't say lower your sound, lower your sound, turn down your sound. No, no, because it's such a general thing. Now, sometimes we say, could you turn down the sound or the volume on the TV? Could you turn down the sound or the volume on the TV? That's okay. That's fine. But specifically voice. So that's the difference. Those are the differences between those words. I hope that's clear. If Fatima, you have other ones that you want me to compare, maybe we can make a playlist. I think it's a good idea, but we can add to it over time. I think that's pretty cool. I like it. Hopefully all of them are clear. Guys, don't forget to hit the like button. Very important. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the links for my courses in the description. And also, if you want to, you can join the WhatsApp group as well. All right. Okay. Um, oh, that was hard. That hurt my brain. It hurt my brain to say all those things. I feel tired now. Oh, Luba's going to join my religion. All right, so now we have two people joining the the English learning religion. <laughs> great. This is going to be great. We got we got to design some robes, some creepy robes and uh, some weird hats. We need some weird hats and uh, we need some chants, I think. And uh, we need some kind of temple. I, I, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Uh, wow, guys, I missed so many questions. I'm sorry. I missed so many questions. What is the best dictionary to know the difference between similar words, Fatima? The answer is thefreedictionary.com. By far. I talked about it yesterday. I talk about it a lot. They don't pay me to say that, but they should. <laughs> they don't pay me to say that, but they should. I don't know if you guys can hear outside. There's wind and rain. The weather recently has been terrible in New York. All right. Let's see what questions I may have missed. Um, Anderson says, give me an example of the word dumbfounded. I was dumbfounded. It's just an adjective. I was dumbfounded. I was dumbfounded. We were dumbfounded. It dumbfounded me. It dumbfounded me. There you go. But more more often, I was dumbfounded. We were dumb, dumbfounded. Luba, your friends call them clay pigeons. Yes, we can call them clay pigeons. That's right. Clay pigeons are a way to describe those clay discs that you shoot into the air and shoot with guns. Correct. 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 If you guys are curious how to spell dumbfounded, there it is. Dumbfounded. 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 Uh, 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 could you mind explaining the meaning of retroactive and giving some examples? Yeah, I can do that. That's a good question. That's a good one. As your parent, I have to teach you this. Like your father, I have to teach you this. No, Ralphie. All right. Well, this is just an extension here. No. All right. Here's an example where you couldn't use them in the same way. And as here is used slightly different. It's not comparing someone to a father. It's saying this is 
one way that we use as where we don't use like it's establishing the relationship so we use as to establish the actual relationship not a comparison of any kind the actual relationship as your english teacher i demand that you i know now i don't have anything to demand i demand that you use dictionary.com to learn words okay I'm expressing my relationship to you as your father, as your parent, as your sister, as your brother, as your, as your whatever, as your best friend. I'm asking you to help me with this, okay? So that's just establishing or saying what the relationship is, okay? Um, so we couldn't use like your father. We would say like your father with something like, um, you know, you're a lot like my father. Uh, you remind me of my father. You're similar to my father. You're not my father. You're similar to my father. You're a lot like my father. You are a lot like my father. So uh, that would be a good example of when we don't use them, how we don't use them the same way all the time. All right. What does Pimba mean? Israel, no idea. Never heard of it in my entire life. Does anyone know what that means? Let me search it. All right, now I have to search it. I hope it's not a d bad word or something. Pimba. Hmm? Pimba or Musica Popular Portuguesa. Portuguesa? How do you say that? is a Portuguese type of music with an up-tempo style which is often associated with rural areas. Now I must search Pimba music. <laughs> Let's see if we can find some Pimba music. Now I must know what Pimba music sounds like. Hold on, guys. Pimba, Pimba music. 2020. <laughs> we got to have the latest Pimba music, obviously. I don't want old Pimba music. Um, all right, here we go. Pimba. I'm going to get demonetized. That's Pimba music. I answered your question, Israel. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Burgess says what's the difference between rather and instead mm. what does Zyball mean why are you guys giving me all these words I've never heard of before I don't know <laughs> Z-A-I-B-A-L never heard of it in my life Z-A-I-B-A-L what's that Destiny. Zybo. Uh, numerology. Destiny. Hidden symbolism. What? I have no idea. So sorry, creepy knight. No clue whatsoever. No clue whatsoever. Richard Burgess. Good question. What's the difference between rather and instead? Okay. Oops. What? Anyone? Anybody want to talk on Skype? <laughs> I'm trying to get people to talk on Skype, but everyone's too scared, except for Luba. It's the only person. All right. So Richard says, what's the difference between rather and instead? And I think the best way to focus on this is to talk about the usage of rather and instead. Often, when we use rather, we're giving hypotheticals. Okay. Now, not always, but often. So we often use the phrase, I would rather, or to ask a question, would you rather? In fact, there's a famous game called, would you rather? And then you say two horrible things and ask people to give you the, uh, the answer. Would you rather eat dog poop that tastes like chocolate or chocolate 
that tastes like dog poop. Think about that one. <laughs> it's a tough one, right? Would you rather eat dog poop? It is dog poop, but it tastes exactly like chocolate. Or would you rather eat chocolate? It is chocolate, but it tastes like dog poop. Which would you rather do? So we're often giving hypothetical choices when we use rather. Now, when we do things differently, we can also use this to describe the past. So it's okay to talk about real things with rather. I decided I would rather go home early than stay overnight. So I decided to drive home. So when we're talking about what we were thinking about in the past, we use rather, right? Or sometimes we say, for example, rather than, rather than driving home at such a late hour, why don't you just sleep on the sofa and then you can go home in the morning? Rather than doing this, why don't you do this? So we're suggesting an option there. That one is not hypothetical. That one is real. Now instead is much broader. Instead we use when we're talking about taking out one thing and putting another thing in its place in all kinds of different ways. Sometimes we use it when we change our minds. For example, instead of driving home after midnight, two hours, it's a long drive, why don't you just sleep on the sofa and then you can drive home in the morning instead of doing that. We're suggesting taking away this option, option number one, which is driving home at a very late hour and then putting in a second option. But that's where they overlap. We have many other ways that we can use instead, which have nothing to do with hypotheticals. For example, we thought that we were going to maybe go to an amusement park tomorrow, but instead we've decided to do something else. So instead of going to the amusement park, why don't we see a movie? Instead of doing this, why don't we do that? Okay. Now we can make that hypothetical using rather, but we don't have to. Okay. What about ingredients? Instead of putting in sugar, why don't you put in honey? Instead of putting in sugar, why don't you put in honey? You could say, you would you rather put in honey instead of sugar? We wouldn't usually use rather in that case. So we'd put instead there, in, instead of rather. Instead there, in, instead of rather. Well, I used instead to explain it. That's breaking the rules of teaching English, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so often we're using instead to talk about choices. We can use instead to talk about the past. For example, instead of arriving at 6 p.m. like you were supposed to, you came at 7.30. That's why everyone was angry at you. Instead of getting there at 6.30, you came at 7 or 7.30. What did I say? Right? So we're talking about the past thing that happened. One thing should have happened, but it didn't. You were supposed to arrive at this time and instead you arrived, this was taken away, and you were here late at a different time instead of the other time, okay? We can use it in all kinds of different ways. So generally we're using rather to put a hypothetical or a non-real situation, choice, option, preference in place, and instead we're often removing one thing and putting another thing there in its place in all kinds of different ways both hypothetical or not real, and real, and true, past events, future events, whatever it may be. So I would say that instead is much more general, much more widely used, and rather is much more non-real, hypothetical, and used to talk about preferences. Okay, And they're used in other ways too, but those are the, the main ways that we use instead and rather. Okay, Hopefully that answers your question. Guys, don't forget to hit the like button. Hit like, also subscribe, and don't forget to check out the links in the description if you're interested in taking full English courses. Uh, could you explain the meaning of proactive if possible? Thanks again. Proactive just means, proactive just means uh, you are you will do something before someone asks you to do it. Oh, you're very proactive. You take action before another person says, hey, do that. Right? Excuse me. It's the Coke Zero. It's coming back up. Uh, proactive is used to talk about someone who has a lot of energy, someone who works hard, someone who is uh, unwilling to um, wait for someone to say, you do this, please do this, you must do this, right? They are the person who will take action first. Usually people like proactive people. It's usually a very positive trait. Da, 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 da. 
Uh, third conditional. Very good question. I'm going to hold off on explaining the third conditional because that one is in my upcoming course on English grammar. So in a couple months, guys, I'll be releasing a very long, probably six or seven hour course on English grammar presented in a way that's hopefully not boring, but with lots and lots and lots and lots of examples. It's written, it's done, uh, but it's not finished, you know, but it's written. Okay, and we talk about the conditionals. We talk about tons of different interesting things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you wait on that one, on explaining the conditionals. Holding off on that one. Um. Oh, creepy knight says it's a swear word in Russian. Oh, well, she's trying to make me say bad words. I knew it. That's not very nice, guys. It's not nice to make me say bad words I don't know. It's called a trolling, and I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. Guys, I have another video I want to show you. I'm going to show you my video, and then we'll get back to the questions. You okay? Um. All right, so... Recently, as we all know, this um, stuff is going on. Recently, recently there have been a lot of, um, you guys know the word conspiracy? Uh, a conspiracy, a conspiracy is when people have a theory that there is some secret plan behind something for example uh, John F Kennedy the president was assassinated and there was a conspiracy that he was killed by the government or people don't know for sure there are all kinds of conspiracies or conspiracy theories people say that 9-11 was a secret plot by the United States government or they say that the Queen of England is actually a a lizard or they say that the earth is flat and it's a uh, global government is behind it. Maybe lizard people, maybe not. These are conspiracy theories. And however you may feel about them, I want to bring up a, uh, an interesting theory that's been going around. And that is that one of the things behind the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic is a conspiracy around 5G. Towers, 5G towers being burned because people suspect that the 5G is somehow going to be controlling our brains. Now, I'm not a scientist, but frankly, frankly, I have read quite a bit about it, and it seems to be absolutely ridiculous. Now, personally, I think conspiracies are very interesting. They're funny, they're kind of cool to read about, flat earth, very funny. But ultimately, I think most of them come down to a psychology a type of person who wants to see connections where there are no connections. The reason I think that conspiracy theories most of the time are not real is because I don't think that human beings are good enough, smart enough, trustworthy enough to be able to plan this giant secret action that involves thousands of people and have nobody release the information when they're a little bit drunk, right? Someone drinks too much red wine, and they, they spill the secret. Ah, ah, you blew it, the conspiracy. Our people are not perfect enough to do conspiracy theories. Real ones, right? I think most conspiracy theories are mostly a type of person who sees connections where there are no connections. Sees events and says, hmm, there must be something secret going on there. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't question things and wonder and research and look into it. But... The thing that scares me is when people take action without the evidence. People are now burning, apparently, it looks like, 5G towers because they assume that 5G is being created and put up to control our brains and keep us in sort of some sort of mental brainwashed prison. Where is the evidence of this would be my question. So I have a quick news clip. We're going to look at the clip. It's just a, a press conference around around this 5G stuff, and then we're going to talk about a couple of the words 
related to it. So let's take a look at the clip. The story somehow got about that uh, uh, they play a role in the, in the spread of the disease. Uh, that's just nonsense, dangerous nonsense as well. Um, and I'm hand over to uh, Steve to say a little bit more about uh, the vital importance of uh, knocking down this rubbish. Yes. Uh, so the 5G story is complete and utter rubbish. It's nonsense. It's the worst kind of fake news. The reality is that the mobile phone networks are absolutely critical to all of us, particularly in a time when we are asking people to stay at home uh, and to um, not see uh, relatives and friends. Uh, but in particular, those are also the phone networks that are used by our emergency services and our health workers. And I'm absolutely outraged, absolutely disgusted uh, that people would be taking action against the very infrastructure that we need to respond to this health emergency. Uh, it is absolute and utter rubbish, and I can't condemn it uh, in stronger terms than that. Okay, so you saw there, this is a press conference uh, with people in the UK who are talking about these, uh, this vandalism against the 5G towers. And they're calling it absolute rubbish. Rubbish is junk, right? It's trash. People in the UK use rubbish more than we use rubbish in America. We usually say trash. We say garbage, right? So we would say, oh, that's garbage. We use it in the same way. We say, that's garbage, right? People have this, this conspiracy theory in mind. And so apparently it's causing some vandalism. And that vandalism is maybe preventing the 5G network from being stable and preventing some communication, okay? Now, they seem to be reacting quite strongly against it. And I've even seen the people who believe the 5G stuff say, oh, that's proof. That's proof. They're, they're reacting strongly against it. That means that it's real. Okay, come on. Just Let's just read the science. Let's, let's be open-minded. Let's not assume that this giant global conspiracy is true without evidence. And I haven't seen any evidence <laughs> that it is other than people saying lizard people. Uh, but I think it's good to be open minded and to consider conspiracy theories. And it's a good exercise to listen to them and then do research and either say, yeah, maybe or say this is ridiculous because of A, B and C. That's my personal view on conspiracy theories. I don't hate that there are conspiracy theories. I think it's good that they exist. Right. I think it's interesting that it reveals a certain type of person, personality type. And I think it's a good exercise to say, OK, well, let me do some research and tell you why I think you're crazy or absolutely wrong about this. And I think probably there are one or two that are conspiracy theory like that are that are true. I'm sure that there are some some conspiracies that are that are real. But that's my that's just my personal viewpoint on this. All right. A couple of specific uh, specific words here. Vital. Vital, you heard him say vital, means very important. If something is vital, it's crucial. It's extremely important. We need it. Often in an emergency, certain things are vital. That means if we don't have those things, bad things will happen. Ventilators are vital during this crisis. Okay. Now, knocking down. Knocking down could be used in different ways. Here, knocking down just means to... Uh, uh, swat it away, to push it away, and to say, nope, no, no, like that with your hand. Dismiss, kind of like dismiss, okay? Fake news. Fake news is a phrase that's commonly used now, but the problem is that it's used so much that everybody kind of uses it as a weapon for their own interest, right? This 5G stuff is fake news. And the 5G people say, oh, they're fake news. And everyone's saying everybody is fake news. So it seems to be causing some confusion. You hear this word thrown around a lot. Does it mean that the news is actually fake? Maybe sometimes, <laughs> maybe sometimes not. Now it's to a point where it's not clear exactly what fake news is because everyone throws the phrase around so much, okay? Critical is similar. Something is critical, very important. In this case, the 5G networks or the hospital system it is vital very similar to vital and then outrage or outraged so if someone is outraged that is their state or their condition they're very upset very angry but if something is an outrage then it's completely ridiculous you can't believe that someone is saying it you can't believe that someone is talking about it this is an outrage 
It's a common common expression that people use when they think something is terrible, wrong, bad, whatever it may be. It's an outrage. I think it's probably used more often in the UK than in America, but Americans do use it. The last word is infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is the basic stuff that keeps society going, okay? It is the cell phone towers, it is the bridges, it is the roads, it is the sewers, it is the electricity, it is all of that stuff, the plumbing systems, all of that stuff <clears throat> is referred to as infrastructure. So when, we, when you hear, now infrastructure can be used in lots of different ways. You can use an infrastructure of something else, right? You could say, for example, a political infrastructure. All right, okay. But generally, when people just use the word infrastructure, they're probably talking about those basic things on which we all sort of live, those basic things that we use and need in order to live a modern lifestyle. Again, bridges, roads, cell phone towers, all that kind of stuff. That's infrastructure. Okay, so hopefully you at least found the video to be interesting. I think using short videos as a way to pull out some useful words is a good way to learn English. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and also check out my courses in the links in the description. All right. <clears throat> what do you guys think of this? I'm curious. Da, 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 da. Who's not following? Which part are you not following? Okay, wait, I need to scroll up. I'm missing something here. All right, I need to find where, where in the chat we are. Do I think the Earth is flat or a globe? Obviously, it is a globe. There is no evidence that it's flat. Lolly Lolly, there are many people who believe um, who believe that the Earth is flat. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's a whole group of people. They're called flat earthers, and they actually believe that the Earth is flat. They actually believe it. They have lots of evidence to support it. Someone died trying to prove it. They launched a rocket up to try to see uh, the curvature of the Earth, um, and uh, they died. Uh, it's a, it's, there's so much evidence against it. It's proof of how creative the human brain is and how we're able to keep different beliefs alive in our minds at the same time, even if those things don't agree with each other, right? Because you can live your life knowing that there are cell phone towers going around the earth and that you rely on gravity existing right and at the same time believe that the earth is flat on a different level this is something which you don't need to learn but it's called cognitive dissonance cognitive dissonance it's basically the the human ability to believe two completely inconsistent things at the same time cognitive dissonance Saeed, which one is correct? The Earth is round. It is a sphere. It is like a ball. And just like all the other planets, like the sun and the moon. Nobody believes it. If you're not sure, Saeed, just start researching. Don't, don't, don't believe anyone else. Do your own research. Research science. Study gravity. Look at pic satellite pictures. Whatever you need to do. There are many reasons. What is the difference between Gale and prison? Gale is a person's name, and prison is a place where naughty people go. Uh, jail, yeah. Da, da, da. Let's see, I'm just catching up here. Let's see here. I think people are not reasonable animals. Oh, I totally agree. Uh, Nectar says, I think people are not reasonable animals sometimes. I think all of us are capable of that thing which is called cognitive dissonance. We're all able to take two ideas which just don't fit together, incompatible, and we're able to we're able to somehow make them both exist in our minds. And I think it's I mean it's interesting because I think that is also a source of our creativity. It's a source of our ability to solve problems in some ways, being able to think of many different components or pieces at once. But it's also the cause of 
uh, misinformation and misunderstandings and confusion and, you know, believing that the earth is, for example, flat. It's called cognitive dissonance. I think it's very interesting. If you guys, because I'm, I'm kind of enjoying finding the videos and sharing them. I don't know if you guys like me sharing videos and talking about them, but I, I kind of find it fun. So if you like it or you don't like it, let me know. Um, and if you have requests for the kinds of things you like to see, let me know. I'd be happy to pick out some videos that might fit your interests, and we can talk about those in future live classes. That would be cool. All right, I'm, I feel like I missed some questions above, so I'm going to scroll up and see if I can find uh, that. Okay. Any tips to improve my spoken English? Is it counterproductive trying to emulate American actors um, in front of a mirror? It's not counterproductive to try to emulate uh, pronunciation. It's not counterproductive. You can imp improve your listening that way. You can catch differences in pronunciation that way, certainly not counterproductive. Uh, Davin says, is the initial vowel in air closer to a or eh in pet? Oh, to me, it sounds like eh. No, actually, it's the other one. Air, air is, is a little closer to the a. That's actually a really good question. So this one, if we say air, 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 we're not saying eh, right? If you notice the difference, a is a wide, my mouth is open wider, a like that, right? A, a, air, air. So we're much closer to saying a, air. The, the beginning position is the same, although the ending position is different. We don't go air, that's not right. But we do still have the same beginning mouth position eh, eh, right there, right? Eh, eh, that's where it is. Then for air, we er, end with the r, and for a, y, we would say a, and stretch it out to the y sound. But the p-e-t, the e in p-e-t is totally different. That's a much more relaxed, flat mouth. If you look at my mouth when I say pet, eh, eh, it's not, ah, not open like air, not wide open like that. It's very narrow and small. Uh, very relaxed. That's not relaxed. That's not relaxed. This is relaxed. Pet. Pet. Eh, 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 eh. Vegetable. Eh, 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 eh. Me mental. Right? So one is wide open, big, s more similar to A-Y for A-I-R. And then the other one, E-H, is more like eh, like pet. Okay? So that hopefully answers your question. Simple easy um i like lolly lolly's question i'll grab that one lolly lolly says still yet already please how do we use these words could you give us some examples thanks and i'm not sure if i should pronounce all the exclamation marks thanks or what degree of excitement that is but um uh i'll just i'll just do thanks so how do we use these still yet and already still very simply is used when something is continuing now which began before right so for example we might say are you still there on the phone it's late at night two friends talking one person says are you still there we've been talking for two hours because you've been telling me about all of the terrible things that happened to you uh, today. I'm, I'm your best friend. We're talking on the phone. And uh, you start crying. And then it's quiet for 30 seconds. And I say, are you still there? You were there before. We've been talking on the phone, right? So I want to know if that is also true now. So we use still when we want to talk about a thing which is going on now, which began in the past. We use still. Right? For example, I'm still in New York. I'm still in New York. I'm still living in New York. I'm still living in New York. Wow. We could use it for characteristics. Oh, you still have that beard? You still have that beard? Oh, you, you still smoke. You still smoke. That means I knew you were smoking before. I knew you had a beard before. 
Now it is also true, and it is continuing. That's how we use the word still. That's generally how we use the word still. Yet is usually to ask if something has happened, and then the answer, if it's a negative, and usually it is used in the negative, is to say no, no, but we plan to in the future. That means it's going to, but it hasn't. And I almost said yet, because that's how we usually use it. For example, for example, I haven't seen Onward, is it Onward or Onwards, the movie, yet. That means I'm planning to watch the movie, but I have not watched it. It hasn't happened yet. Okay, and someone might ask, have you seen Onward yet? That means I'm assuming you're going to watch it. What's the difference between saying, have you seen Onward? Is it Onward or Onwards? I'm going to look silly if I don't know the right answer to this, but let's just say it's Onward. Have you seen Onward yet? Yes, I watched it last night. So the person who asks is assuming that the other person is going to watch it. Maybe they talked about it before and both talked about how they were excited to watch the movie. If I didn't have that conversation with, with, with you before, then I'll just say, have you seen Onward? I don't have any assumption about you're planning to watch it or you were planning to watch it or whatever, right? There's no assumption there. Have you seen it? Yes or no? Have you seen it yet? Suggests that I know that you were planning to do it and has it happened? Okay, so that's how we use yet. I haven't got my visa yet. That means I'm waiting for my visa. I will get my visa, right? Maybe in two days, three days, I don't know. It's going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet, yet. Okay, so that's how we use yet. Then already would be kind of like the opposite of that, where we would say that it has happened. And sometimes we focus on, we emphasize, we stress that it's early. Wow, it's so early. That was so fast, for example. I already got my visa. I already got my visa. Or you could say, I got my visa already. Now, sometimes that means that it has just happened. It's already finished. Someone says, uh, did you get your visa? Yeah, I already, I already got my visa. Now, we might be focusing on the, fast, the fact that it came sooner than expected, right? Maybe only a week after you applied for your visa. Three days? A week? Wow, that's so fast. Yeah, I already got it. I thought it was going to take a month. It only took a week. Wow, I already got it. You already got it? Yeah, wow, amazing, okay? Sometimes we use it to say that we don't want to do something because that thing already happened. A great example of this is lunch, eating. So we say, for example, did you eat? Yeah, I already ate. Hey, I'm going to go out to grab some lunch. Do you want to go with me? You want to come? Uh, no, thanks. I already ate. That thing has been finished. That thing is complete. So we say already to focus on the fact that it's done and to suggest in that situation that normally we would join you for lunch. I would like to, but I'm not hungry because my eating is finished. I already ate lunch. So again, already is used to talk about, wow, so fast. You're already done with your exam? How are you already finished with this book? It's a 900 page book. How did you finish it in three days? How did you already read it? Eh, I'm a fast reader. Or actually, I didn't read it. Ha ha ha. Uh, or I, I, I speed read it, whatever it is, okay? And then the other focus is on the fact that it's just done and might emphasize that we would like to do something if we hadn't already done it. So that's the difference between still yet and already. It's a good question. Thanks for asking. Lolly lolly. Guys, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and also check out my courses in the links in the description. Okay. Hopefully that's clear. Um, uh, da, da, da. Keep them up. Keep what up? It's a great way to learn real English. Oh, the videos. Good. I will, I will do that. I will do that. I will keep sharing videos. Let me know what type of videos you like to watch. Fanny says, I try to improve my English. You are a good teacher. I like you from Portugal. Hey, we were just listening to some, uh, what's it called? Limba music? We were just listening to some Portuguese music earlier. You missed it. Oh, Pimba, sorry. Oh, I didn't read the rest of your comment. Pimba, sorry. Uh, I should have read the rest of your comment. 
I've got a question when watching a TV show. Do you recommend me more watching the whole episode at once or learn it scene by scene? Because uh, my English teacher told me that it's better to learn it deeply. I would say, Richard, both. Uh, if you want to just learn English and improve your listening a little bit and get some insights, watch a whole episode. You'll enjoy yourself more. You might get a sense for some culture stuff, some pronunciation, improve your listening a bit. You might pick up a few words if you're taking notes. But if you have a different project, which is to, this is my learning episode, watch it very slowly and carefully, that's also good. They're both good. They're just two different kinds of things. They're different. Okay. One is a project of learning deeply, learning every word or phrase or idiom or whatever it is. The other is a project of uh, sort of passively learning, soaking in the culture and not learning as much, but probably enjoying yourself more. Senia says, I like your idea about describing things in detail. Do you think this practice could help increase vocabulary and speak fluently? What other exercises can be effective? Uh, that is such a big question, Ksenia. I would say maybe the building your English brain course would be a more effective way to answer that. Uh, I don't want to deflect the question. It's just such a big question that to really answer it, it would take me exactly two hours and 58 minutes to answer. So um, I'm going to have to skip that one just because it's too many pieces. Otherwise, I wouldn't be completely answering it, if that makes sense. If that makes sense. You're welcome, Lolly Lolly. Did you eat yet? Have you have you eaten yet? Yeah, both of those are correct, Rolfi. <sighs> All right. My throat is starting to hurt, guys. I might have to. Going to and will are the same. Going to and will are the same. Same thing. Okay. Guys, good questions today. If I missed any questions, you can ask uh, next time. Or I'm going to try to do two or three live streams, live, live classes per week. Kind of starting to lose my voice, so... I think we'll stop for today, but uh, thanks to everybody for joining. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. I've I've had fun. Uh, if you guys have other questions that I didn't ask or that you think of later, write them down. And then in, in the next live stream, ask them, and I'll do my best to answer as clearly as I can. Uh, but we did have some good ones today. And again, if I didn't answer all of them, I apologize. Next time. And also, you can, you can ask questions in the WhatsApp group, okay? So, guys, thanks again. See you see ya next week, probably. And um, check out the video that's posting today at 8 p.m. Uh, featuring Luba. Uh, it's coming out at 8 o'clock. And then there's another one coming out uh, tomorrow. So, check those out. And hopefully see you guys in the uh, see you guys in the uh, WhatsApp group. And don't forget to hit the like button, guys. I really appreciate that very much. Hit subscribe, and also courses in the description. See you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye, everybody.